All right, everybody, I know you're excited. Come on, sit down, gather around. It is time for Claro's Burning Question of the Week. Our Burning Question of the Week is brought to you by our friends over at Crown Heads out of Nashville, Tennessee, and their brand new Broadway Broadleaf Cigar. Big, bold, brawny, and delicious. This is one of those smokes that all of you strong cigar smokers are surely gonna love. All right, our question for the week comes from Freddie Fingerbomb out of Moody, Alabama. Alabama, man, I'm from Alabama too. Woohoo, roll tide. Okay, okay, Freddie, if you're an Auburn fan, that's okay too. We're all cigar smokers here. We'll leave politics, religion, and American football alone for the time being. Let's see, Freddie's question. Uh, hey, Claro, I got a question. I got a really big buzz from smoking what I thought would be a mild cigar the other day. How much nicotine is in the average cigar, if I might ask? Well, Freddie, that's a fantastic question to ask, and one that doesn't have a real straightforward answer. Essentially, cigars range in size and shape, as well as circumference. And basically being that all tobacco on the planet has at least some level of nicotine to it, there's no getting around the fact that the bigger the cigar, the chance there is going to be more nicotine in it. Now, you did mention that you were smoking what you presumed would be a milder smoke and it gave you a bit of a buzz. That is interesting because oftentimes stronger cigars, which have more lijero leaf in them, which comes from the top of the plant, provide more nicotine and are a bit more potent typically because they are exposed to more sunlight. Now, that being said, how much food was in your stomach at the time does play a role in how a cigar can affect you. Uh, if you smoke an empty stomach, you can get a bit woozy. It happens to the best of us. As well as drinking. If you already have a little bit of an alcohol buzz going on, it could get amplified by that nicotine in the cigar. Furthermore, these are hand-rolled products that come from tobacco from different countries and different crops from different years are influenced by the weather in different ways. So oftentimes you will encounter a cigar that's got a little bit of a kick in it and then smoke the exact same stick a week later or so and find that, hey, that's not nearly as strong. And it's all because, well, there's some degree of variance. That being said, cigar manufacturers and the master blenders that make these magnificent smokes for us are hellbent on keeping quality control at the forefront of everything and want the strength or nicotine content of the cigar to be as evenly consistent as possible. Now, Freddie, if you're looking for us to talk a little bit nerdy to you, well, here we go. I've got a little bit of information about nicotine and how it affects the human body so you can get an idea as to what it's doing to you and why. When absorbed into the bloodstream, nicotine from tobacco mimics a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which basically dupes your body into thinking that you've got an excess of these neurotransmitters and then essentially forms something called dopamine. Dopamine is that fantastic winning at life feeling that you get when you hit the lottery or eat a delicious piece of chocolate, sip a little bit of wine or encounter a new romance, ha <laughs> ha. And while some scientists argue that dopamine levels can decrease over time the more that you do something, uh, cigars not excluded, of course, I do find that sometimes you encounter a smoke that's really strong unexpectedly and kicks you in the ass, and you gotta be prepared for it. And while a bit of a tobacco buzz and that dopamine feeling is definitely intoxicating, just like slamming 13 beers in a row with your buddies out back behind that football stadium will sometimes make you a wee bit woozy. The same can be said for cigars. That's why we recommend that you, if you want to, offset any of this nicotine buzz and come back down to earth a little bit, reach for that honey bear. A simple spoonful of honey, nine times out of 10, will help sober you up when it comes to nicotine buzzes, as well as any form of sugar for that matter. So if you happen to be out and about and don't have honey handy, go to the local gas station, grab yourself a little packet of sugar and down that sucker. You're almost guaranteed to feel better pretty damn quick too. Another option that you can consider is to take a nap, which is what I usually do. But then again, I'm in my cigar studio, so I have the luxury of a sofa and a lazy boy over there if I need it. A little bit of a power nap for 15, 20 minutes usually is enough to get your head back 
down to the ground level and stop it from spinning. Which leads us to your core question there, Freddy, and that is how much nicotine is in the average cigar? While there is no form of accurately gauging how much nicotine is in each stick in a box, it is safe to presume that the typical Toro to Churchill is gonna have anywhere between 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of nicotine in each stick. So while you may not be inhaling your cigars, hopefully, you are still absorbing the smoke and the nicotine in it through your larynx and your nostrils and your tongue and palate. And it does seep into your bloodstream that way. So if you're still feeling a little bit gun shy from that last nicotine overload that you encountered in that stogie you smoked the other week there, Freddy, go ahead and pick up a smaller Vitola or smaller shape or size of the same blend and give it another try and see if the nicotine kicks in all over again. Again, this has everything to do with portion control, so a smaller cigar should hopefully, in a milder blend, be able to provide you with all the flavor profiles and subtler aromatic nuances that you want without a whole ton of nicotine to go along with it. Anywho, thanks for tuning in and for your question there, Freddie, and hopefully we've been helpful. We'll catch all of you in the next burning question of the week coming to you from your friends here at Claro, where we will discuss all sorts of new information that you have been wanting to know. Burning question of the week.